And the idea is to really challenge people on how they view themselves and how you're being perceived. Because I, I do think that like a lot of us, like every, a lot of people, they were, um, not a physical, but it's just more of like a emotional masks, um, in society. And it, we really rely on, um, ourselves to really, to take down those masks and to reconsider and like rethink about who we are. And that's sort of the base of what, um, the installation is. And it was pretty cool. Like I sort of took up the hallway. It wasn't just a room. So it was um, definitely, you can walk by it. I also mounted some face masks on uh, the wall with strings kind of going through along the ceiling. So it was a bit more of, um, uh, you kind of have to like walk through the space and sort of like um, interact with it um, and engage with it. Podcasting for the Art Gallery of Mississauga, this is Border Crossings, a podcast where we listen to stories and experiences from artists, innovators, community activators, and people living creative lives. I'm your host, Vassandra, and I can't wait to unpack the magic of Border Crossings with you. Are you curious about living a creative life fearlessly? Then hang tight for a dose of inspiration. Hi, Annie. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Me too. How are you today? Yeah, uh, definitely great. Um, yeah, lots of things happening uh, in the world, like, um, but it's like a little bit warmer outside. So there's definitely a little change in, in 2020. Oh, 100%. How's that social distancing working for you? It's uh, it's okay because I'm a bit of an introvert, so I am okay with um, distancing, and I I don't really mind sort of being alone and just sort of like focusing on what I need to do and um, figuring out some next steps. So it's been uh, a lot of different like revelations, like and yeah, just sort of like trucking along. I hear you, and you know what? I am the same. I just love being in my own space and kind of working on, uh, you know, things on my own. But I'm curious to know how has that influenced or impacted your work as an artist? Um, physically, not uh, not exactly too much, just because I work in uh, mostly in the digital realm. So it doesn't matter if social distancing or sort of um, being public. Um, so there's that uh, one advantage. Um, with what's happening, I think it also um, impacted me a little bit in terms of emotionally and a uh, bit of a mentally. There was a lot of things that opened my eyes to. There was a lot of things that um, sort of got me thinking. And it also impacted my work in a, in a bit of a positive way because I can use it as a channel to express like some of the thoughts or reflecting on what I see in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the latest project that you're working on? I'm super curious about it. Yeah, so my latest project, I've uh, I've been traditionally an abstract painter. I love painting. Mm -hmm. And also as more of like a digital um, a sort of a person, mm -hmm. I, I've been trying to sort of like how can I um, merge my two love together. So I started kind of revisiting my old paintings. I, I wanted to know how I can sort of make it like more like newer and more of like now. And I've sort of created like augmented reality um, using my paintings as a base. So using like um, Spark AR, which is a uh, AR program uh, for Facebook and Instagram. So I created some um, AR filters that you could like um, point to my paintings and then you'll see a bit of like augmented reality, sort of more uh, visuals with it. And I'm trying to create some new pieces as well, but right now I've been trying to digitalize my um, old work. I see, I see, sounds, sounds incredibly cool. I have to ask you, your title is creative uh, technologist. That sounds so cool, Annie. What does it mean? So, um, yeah, I've worked as a creative technologist um, at a few um, agencies, at advertising agencies. So it really varies on projects. 
So for me, it's about um, how to figure out some technical builds on ideas, but as well because I'm more on the creative and ideation side. For me, it's about how do we use technology in a way that it can help bring ideas out better and how can we um, sort of bring, you know, like projects, um, brands or any kind of like um, objectives into more of a modern age. So it's not just about using tech for tech sakes, but it's about like how can we um, push things further and, and also how do we make it a little bit more innovative. Sounds, sounds really cool. How did you discover this? This sounds like a niche. Yeah, so it's interesting. My career path has been a um, bit of like a, a it's a it's a really fun roller coaster ride. So mm -hmm. I graduated school with a bachelor of fine arts. So I actually majored in abstract painting, um, video arts, and minored in philosophy. But I've mm -hmm. always been really interested in digital. So I dabbled into front end and back end development. Um, I did a post grad in that. Um, did a bit of 3D animation, and I started working as a digital um, designer. So I worked on a lot of like digital products, um, design, and then I sort of like worked my way into art direction, which is like thinking of um, how things are visually treated, how things are visually um, so shown, and just like more of the ideation side. But I've always been more on a digital realm um, because art direction, it's a lot um, within film and video mm -hmm. with um, advertising. And I've, I've always been so interested in sort of like technology. It sort of worked out in my um, previous agencies where they um, saw that um, in me and was able to sort of uh, let me be more of the visual um, person as well as like ideating and innovation and also helping with like tech builds. That's also something I've always been interested. Like I think I see myself as a problem solver. So mm -hmm. that worked really well. And then that's sort of something what I'm doing today um, mm -hmm. in my role. And uh, yeah, so it's, there was no, I never even thought about um, a position like that ever. Like I, I just sort of like put, keep pushing what I love doing and I uh, yeah and and here I am that's beautiful mm -hmm. um so what inspires your work the most I know you're working with your um previous artworks and kind of trying to digitize or create digital experiences out of them but what inspires your work so I've always been really interested in um surrealism uh mm -hmm. so it's um, a genre um, which is more about the tapping into like it's real but it's also not real there's that dreamlike quality um, I always thought that was really beautiful and my favorite artist is Salvador Dali and he mm -hmm. is I studied a lot about him mm -hmm. and what inspires me it's like creating these work that it's almost like real life but they're really not and it it makes you kind of question about it. It makes you sort of take a second look at it. And that's mm -hmm. what I love about um, creating pieces like that. It's almost a borderline of realism and not realism. And it's just sort of something um, kind of from the dream stake and you mm -hmm. kind of have to sort of take a look twice. So that sounds beautiful. Um, Annie, so like, what is your process like once you're assigned the project? Um, so for me, when I'm assigned a project, I definitely try to think about um, sort of a what 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 does it mean, and also what are some of the cultural impacts. What are some of um, I also do a lot of different research of like I love trying to get any inspirations from different artists, um, sort of different relevant work that is present in, in society. And also then I sort of kind of dig into um, sort of my realm of what, um, why, why does, why would it make sense? Like for me, it's really going through of doing a little bit of research and then understanding um, how things sort of like mean within it. And then for me, 
it's to then sort of like piece together like in my head of just okay well this is how i interpret it this is how i see the meaning of it and then and then i sort of go with it there's not there's not necessarily sometimes um thinking too much i don't really like to um sort of restrict myself into too many guidelines because i feel like if you restrict yourself too much it, your ideas kind of get boxed in so mm -hmm. it's good to do a bit of research but then you also allow yourself to sort of like go wild lovely so what's your favorite project and could you share the story behind it it's definitely this uh installation called x which is done at um it's called come up to my room um, mm -hmm. at the Gladstone Hotel. So what is exciting about this is that um, basically it's, an, it's a yearly annual thing. And basically Gladstone Hotel, they have like different rooms and each artist gets to, you know, take over a room and to create an installation. Mm -hmm. So this was one of the mixed installations that I've done that kind of combines, you know, physicality as well as digital. And that is something I've always been really interested on. Mm -hmm. So with an installation, I created um, probably about um, like 20 um, faces, um, mm -hmm. their masks, and I mounted them on a wall and they're basically a projection mm -hmm. of faces that I sort of created. It's a little bit more abstract. It's not really, um, it's more like a visual treatment style and I projected them onto the masks. And the idea is to really challenge people on how they view themselves mm -hmm. and how you're being perceived. Because I, I do think that like a lot of us, like every, a lot of people, they were um, not a physical, but it's just more of like emotional masks um, mm -hmm. in society. And it, we really rely on, um, ourselves to really to take down those masks and to reconsider and like rethink about who we are and that's sort of the base of what um the installation is mm -hmm. and it was pretty cool like i sort of took up the hallway it wasn't just a room so it was um, definitely you can walk by it i also mounted some face masks on uh, the wall with strings kind of going through along the ceiling. So it's a bit more of um, uh, you kind of have to like walk through the space and sort of like um, interact with it um, and engage with it. Sounds very inviting uh, to me, Annie. Um, I know that you're incredibly passionate about representing women in technology. Could you share your thoughts about this? I, yeah, I'm definitely a big advocate of women in technology, just because I know there's a very few of us um, out there. Granted, within, uh, even our industry, like in tech industry and advertising, there are definitely a lot more women, but mm -hmm. I feel like the ratio is still um, very much unbalanced. Even when mm -hmm. I was in school for um, digital design and development, there weren't that many, you know, female students and it's a bit of a shame because it this is definitely an industry that um we need more females in mm -hmm. and it's yes like it's not just about um having women in technology sectors but it's about having female voices in creating tech um, these digital products because for example, if we talk about, you know, um, artificial intelligence, like in the chatbot realm or even in more sophisticated, like, like Alexa and Siri and mm -hmm. um, Google Assistants, there were a lot of issues when um, the voices that these um, tech devices are using, they weren't very reflective of female voices. Like they, mm -hmm. there were an entire report on how Siri was very submissive. Like they were taking mm -hmm. um, verbal abuse and mm -hmm. it's not a good way to represent female voices because Siri and all these, you know, like um, uh, AI home assistants are using female voices. So, and, and when we look at who were creating these devices, there were a, there were a lot of like you know male developers in the companies, 
they there weren't a lot of female developers or even part of the design or the engineering mm -hmm. so if we have more female in the sectors it would be better to creating more of an inclusive product for the future mm -hmm. so that is one part that I thought it's really important it's to sort of how can we encourage more women to be in the industry and it doesn't it's um it's definitely um runs in a bit of a circles because there's not a lot of women in the tech sector to help you know promote the sector so how would more women want to be in it because they would there's a lot of um they might think it's a little bit intimidating they might think that it's just a male-run industry but it's it's not it could it doesn't have to be so it's something that I always try to encourage um, females to also like think about pushing themselves into you know uh, more in the tech sectors and mm -hmm. we get to build fun things in the for the future so yes that's true I love the way you put that building fun things for the future I know that you uh, grew up in Mississauga. Uh, could you share a little bit more about growing up in Mississauga as an artist? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I lived in Mississauga um, uh, when I was like little and I did go to school, like high school there. And mm -hmm. it's uh, sort of growing up there. There were a lot of um, there were art culture, but I feel like it wasn't very much celebrated. Mm -hmm. um, I think right now it's definitely a lot better. Um, you know, like a lot of the work that's being done in the art gallery in Mississauga. Mm -hmm. um, their growing growing up in Mississauga was was really great. Like it was definitely a very diverse city, and it's really nice for that because you get to um, learn from different cultures. You get to like listen to a lot of different people's perspective and you kind of grow better. For me, I definitely grew a lot um, as an artist, like in a way, uh, sort of like when I was like living there. I remember when I was in school, when I was in high school, mm -hmm. um, it was very encouraging from my teachers to be sort of like dabbling into the arts. They always like encourage me to check out the galleries, to look at mm -hmm. different things. So mm -hmm. it was, it was great. Like I, I was really thankful for um, sort of growing up in there and able to be in one of the mo one of the, like the most diverse like cities in Ontario. Thank you for sharing that, mm -hmm. uh, Annie. What is your message or advice for upcoming uh, digital artists? Yeah, definitely keep um, pushing. Um, I, in digital, it's there's no right or wrong way. Just like even in art in general, there's no right or wrong way to um, kind of bring your vision to life. It's just all about um, sort of staying true to yourself and just pushing forward and making sure that your vision is there. And for art, I always find that art a racist question and they're great because that is sort of one of the points of art is for people to question for people to sort of look within themselves sort of engage with the piece and question why and one of the big thing um as an artist is that you should do the piece for your own sake like this is your art like you should make sure it is a hundred percent your vision a hundred percent what you want to do with it and don't let too much external resources to tell you no um mm -hmm. because at the end of the day like it should be you about you for the piece lovely thank you so what keeps you going as an artist uh, annie i know on your own at home socially isolated what keeps you going that's a great question <laughs> um yeah for me it's it's funny because um, art really allows me to sort of be sort of um, go inside sort of like my mind and kind of like going outside like my four walls. It's sort of like my way of um, sort of seeing um, what is there, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because I'm so interested in um, surrealism and surrealism. It's really about the dream state. It's about um, creating a world that 
it's almost real, but not real at the same time. So that, for me, it's kind of nice to start recreating a almost like another dimension for me to sort of like be in, um, to see wow. what's in there, and just to create. Sounds wonderful, and I can't wait for you to explore more spaces like this and create these different、uh, surreal experiences for people like us. I'm wishing you the best, Annie. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining us on this episode. This podcast is an extension of the Border Crossings Project, a community-engaged arts project funded by the Ontario Trillium Foundation, the Ontario Arts Council, and the City of Mississauga. Do you have a story to share with us? Are you living a creative life out there on your own? Well, I'm keen to hear from you. Write to me at agmconnect@mississauga.ca. Thank、you